Okay, technically we're live. All right, so technically we're live, and just so you know, I have you like, there's a screen, and then you're like a little bubble right here next to me. <laughs> yeah. There you go, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I know, right? I can like put you, <laughs> when, you're, when you're saying bad things, I'll put you on one side, and then when you're saying good things, I'll put you on the other. <laughs> All right, so welcome. We have a couple people already joining. If you can hear us, give us a thumbs up. Say hello in the chat. Um, let me add your name to the screen so people know who you are. And then you know what? I'm going to Google this too. What's your favorite color, Mr. Stitch? You have so many. <laughs> well, you gotta pick one right now. Okay, what are you feeling right now this week? What are you feeling right now this week? Green? Solid. Very good, very good. All right, so I pulled up your name and I'm putting it under your little video square so people know who you are. Uh, let's add a description. All right, some people are saying hello, hello. Let's give a little quick shout out before we get too um, distracted with to look at the chat. We have Love This Yarn and Liz and Loki Studio, Pamela, Dittmer. Oh my God, dude, trying to say people's names is the best game ever <laughs> when you go live and you like say hi in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I actually love trying to attempt to say people's names. Dietmer. That sounds like it has like an accent somewhere. Uh, Kelly's Crochet Adventures. Oh, they can't hear Mr. Stitch. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Okay, why not? Um, hold on. It's probably me. Give me one sec. Let me see the settings on this. Um, dun, 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 dun. Here, say something, Greg, and then people. Can you guys hear Mr. Stitch? Oh, we got a super chat from Blanca Valtierre. So that's pretty much like a tip. Uh, so super special shout out. Thank you so much, Blanca. Let's put you on the screen for that. She used a super sticker. Ow! It's a sticker of a lemon character blowing a big red heart. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, wait, they still can't hear you. Maybe it's my headphones. Maybe that's why, because I'm connected to my headphones. Oh, hopefully not. YouTube, Lion Brand, uh, the uh, subscribers and such. Uh oh, now they say they can't hear any of us. Uh oh. Uh oh, testing. One, two, one, two. Testing. Skype guest audio is playing on the Mac's built-in speakers, which could result in an echo. Turn on echo cancellation or use headphones to monitor Skype. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um, Uh-oh, they can't hear us now. <laughs> what did I do? Oh, no. Now I'm looking for my headphones. No, 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 it's not you. It's me. It's like, um, okay. 
think of me having like a DJ keyboard in front of me. I just have to. Uh -huh. Okay, wait. I think I figured it out. I think I found the right buttons. Sorry, guys. Thanks for the troubleshooting. Thanks. Okay. Oh, they can hear us both now. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, then I'll stop touching things. Okay. <laughs> can you hear me? Okay, I'll stop touching things. Um... All right, so what yeah, were we talking about me. before we went live? Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us. We're just chit-chatting and talking about life, yarn, and how just crochet influences stuff in our daily lives. <laughs> yeah, that's all. <laughs> um, I should have taken notes. We were having a very good We were testing out the Skype call, we and we had a very good conversation. Um, okay, well, I had some points anyways to segue into. Mr. Stitch, what is your opinion? And let me write this on the uh, screen. Opinions on Christmas Advents. Christmas thumbs up Advents or thumbs hearts. down? How many have you done? Well. Have you wish you'd done? How many are saved on your posts on Instagram or whatnot? Or what is your experience oh, on them? Are we speaking of like doing it for like as far as like crochet or anything of that nature? No, as a customer. As a custom, I've never done it. Never? I've never done a Christmas advent. I've, I've never done it. Because that's literally what I'm looking up now, because like I was planning ahead on some video ideas. And uh, what do you call it? Um, I, it's so hard to pick. It's so hard to pick one. <laughs> like, what are your options? Like, what do you, like, what do you see? Uh... Well, I could share my screen on my computer. Uh, but anyways, um, a few designers that I have saved. So let me open up my saved posts. Because <laughs> that's literally what I've been doing this whole week. I'm like, which ones am I going to pull the trigger on? Because <laughs> I've never done one before. So this is going to be the first time that I ever even consider getting one. And... It's one of those things where I don't, I haven't developed a criteria for it. So I don't even know what to yeah. base as a customer. What should I even be looking yeah. for? Because I know for a fact, you know, length, how much am I getting in total? Um, yeah. Variety and originality. So, oh. um, so anyone who's watching us now, let us know in the chats. Uh, what criteria do you use for picking a Christmas yarn advent? So you've never done yeah, one, right? I, really? I, I've never done that, but I'm very interested. Now that you mentioned that, like, I'm I don't know if you can interested. see that. Can you see that? Look at that. Just even I like. I see that. So 24 days. Just like different color palettes. I don't know if that's showing up. Hopefully it's showing up. Um, oh my God, that's beautiful. So things like that. Like right now, I'm like, right now I'm this close to pulling the trigger on this one. This one's the Shining Collection. It's oh, so nice. I'll, I'll send it to you on Instagram. This is a Earthen Empress. I just discovered her on Instagram. Her post popped up, and I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's okay. literally how I. <laughs> like I may, I look, I may just like dive into that. Like seriously. Oh my god, I'm so That's bad. So, so some peep, someone's in the chat. So Mr. Stitch, so that way you can talk a little bit. Explain to us, what is a Christmas yarn advent? <laughs> the, the, spot. the guy who has never really like done it. Uh, oh, um, oh, okay. it's okay. Um, so it's pretty much some hand-dyed yarn designers. You, usually it's a 12-day or a 24-day option. Okay. And they send you that many different types of yarn. So that way every day you open up, you have like a little gift for 12 days or 24 days until Christmas, leading up to Christmas, which is where you usually get a full hank of um, a special Christmas colorway. So for those curious about what that is, that is what a yarn advent is. 
You can currently find some that are Halloween themed. So I know some Halloween advents just began today, if I'm not mistaken. What did it? What day are we? 16? Sixteen. Yeah. So yeah. fifteen days. Fifteen days till Halloween. Woo! <laughs> you have your costume. I so I didn't participate. That's why I'm got curious for it now because on Halloween, okay. a bunch of Halloween advent calendars, teasers, and photos are going up, and I'm like, what is this? <laughs> I want to open up 12 different presents. <laughs> well, you have me interested. I, like, I really want to know what it is now. <laughs> I'll send you, I'll send you um, the ones that I found because there are some yes. that... Um... Hold on, I'm checking the chat right now. Some people are saying... Uh... Oh, people are saying, hi, Gregory. Hi, Greg. Hello. Hi. Allez-vous, What's up? Vous crochet says, hello, Gregory. <laughs> Hello, Jamie. How are you? Soon to be... Oh, there Oh, oh my God. Oh, la, la. Monsieur Ten... Um, Monsieur <laughs> Paul Le Français? <laughs> je... <laughs> je parle un peu le français. <laughs> um, okay. So, Mr. Stitch, I wanted to ask you... Um, what is on your hook right now? <laughs> Well, um, actually, there's nothing really on my hook right now. I have something. Oh, oh crap! I have something on my needles. Mm. So, like, yeah, I am a newbie, like knitter. Hold on, let me make. Um, your, I'm making your video a little bit bigger, so if you want to show that off, they can see it. Okay, but no, this is. Um, I'm in the process of designing my first knitted garment. Like and learning knitting at the same time, right? <laughs> I don't know if this is gonna work, but this I, I, I am I am willing to I, I'm look I'm up for the challenge. Mm -hmm. um, so right now I'm making like um, this. It's pretty much like that asymmetrical. Um, what is that? <laughs> Little like see through knitted um, top that I have. I created the, the Mister Stitch infamous uh, mesh stitch. I call it yeah. I call it your signature because like you're so good at like knowing where to place it on the body. Like, good job on that. <laughs> it's, it's, okay, it's just years and years, not years, but trial and error of like taking actual clothes apart and then piecing them back together mm -hmm. and knowing where how to build in, like garments. So that's all that is like really. Um, but no, that's what this is. This is going to be. Something similar to that, but it's going to have like a really big cow neck. So, yeah. Very nice, very nice. I've always was super scared of huge cowl necks because I always, I'm short, so I never want to take away from my height. But I realized they just look so, so good. So I just gave in. And that's why like I kind of... I was looking at your, look, I was looking at that earlier. I was like, dope, dude, like so dope. Is that yours? Yeah. It's so dope. Yeah. I really like that a lot. I And this was the first time I ta I tried that like swoop technique where you just like sew yeah. it at the end here. And the shape is very nice. I so I don't mind. That. I'm short and it's taking up lots of my height. Oh, but I don't great. care. It looks nice. It's how sparkly. How short are you? <laughs> don't say short. How short are you? But how I'm, earthy I'm are you? I'm 5'4 on a good day. <laughs> it's practically the same height. <laughs> I'm five five, so we're uh, yeah. we're we're fun size. <laughs> we're fun sized. <laughs> All right, so I yeah. wanted to, Mr. Stitch, I wanted to get your opinion on these color schemes. Okay. <clears throat> what do you think? I like that. I like I like the one at the top, and I like the um. Okay. Like, okay, now this one right here, the one with the is it yellow and blue and black? It is like a tan, yeah. Oh, okay. Is that, okay, is, are those hats on top? Yeah, they're like hoodies. They're hoods. Oh, hoodies. Ah, okay, 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 okay. I like them. I really do. So I that, like the top one, I'm currently doing right now. I really like that. Isn't that cool? This was with Mandala roving. It's, wait, it's roving? Yeah, it's roving. Shut up, let me see. What? Yeah, it's roving, dude. It's, um... Mandala came out with a roving. 
You know what, Mandala? <laughs> I'm currently awaiting to get approved to be an affiliate of theirs. So if anyone purchases from Line Brand, use my code. <laughs> I feel yes, like an official yes. YouTuber now. <laughs> yes, come on, LB, LBY. Uh, so, so that, that corn is good, huh? Like you just like just slide that down. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, talking about designing, a good segue. Yeah. Mr. Stitch, what is, give us a little insight on your, how do you even, do you draw things out? Do you sketch things out? Do you just, like, put color together? Because, like, me, like, I always have my crayons here, and I like to, like, I'll just color in, like, colors nearby, or, like, next to each other mm -hmm. to get, like, ideas and stuff. Oh, well, there's the wrong notebook. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you do? Well, for me, mm -hmm. before last year, before I did the whole show with um, Louis Boria of um, Brooklyn Boy Dance, um, the what was it, the Kaleidoscope Fashion Show with um, Vogue Knitting, um, I, I pictured everything in my mind. I would design everything in my mind, and I would see things. color is going to go. This is how this is going to taper. This is how this is going to go down. Um, okay. and this is how I'm going to make the train this. And so everything like uh, it's like just very met, met, I cannot say it, methodical. In my head. I imagine everything in my head. Um, but I, I realized last year when I started, they asked us to sketch out like our garments. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't really do that. Um, but I said, okay, I'll do it. And I did. I don't have them. I think I put them away. But, um, yeah, I put them away. But uh, when I was sketching them, I was like, oh, my God. So this is actually, like, coming out better than what I actually envisioned in my head. Isn't and that, so, no, isn't that the beauty? Honestly, like, the beauty of crochet and whatnot, because yeah. it's, it's a craft where... It's a craft where you don't know how it's going to look like until you, like, you have to commit. There's some type of commitment. Yeah. And, like, it yeah. speaks to the type of person that crochets or uses yeah. this tech, this craft. Yeah. Because you got to commit, first of all, to, like, your yeah. idea. Then you got to commit to, like, swatching it all out or, you know, like you yeah. said, your mid-work. <laughs> and then you come up with a better, quote-unquote, better idea. And then it's exactly. like, no, what do I do? <laughs> Do I frog exactly. everything or? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's how I am. Like, that's how it was for me. Like, I'm like in the middle. Like, it, like I said, I free, I freehand everything. And I'm like, okay, I can see this. If I do it like this, oh my God, what if I get this? No, like, take it out. Take it out. Okay, no, let's do it like this. Oh, let's put a cable here. Oh, no, I don't like that. So let's do something else. So it's just like, ah. Uh, but I, like, at the, um, the end product is always mind-blowing for me it's like always mind-blowing because i'm like huh i didn't envision that but i love the way i love like the, the path that it took and so yeah i just play it around and i tell people all the time um just um, just be a kid again explore you know just have fun with it that's like that's all designing is using your creativity being a kid your imagination so would you, um, <clears throat> what's your opinion then on the question, you have to know how to draw to be able to plan, pre-plan? Or do you have to know? Do you think people should take drawing classes or? <clears throat> what do you think? Uh, well. So, okay, wait. So disclaimer for anyone watching, you know, this is just our own opinion. We don't. We're not talking for everyone. We're just like providing different perspectives on different topics of crochet and yarn. Um, but that's definitely something I've heard when I try to tell other people to take up the craft. They tell me <clears throat> either it's like, oh, I don't know how to draw, or I don't know how to like think about ideas or something. Wait a minute. So you said take up the craft. Are we talking about? Are we just talking about crochet designing, like? <clears throat> cows and patterns and stuff like that or we are are we talking about like the actual part of fashion designing of like actual creating like 
Well, why not Garden. both? Fashion design and crochet. Because, okay. I mean, you, you, yeah. uh, how do I say it? You've been exposed to, like, the bougie, couture, crochet, and, like, by that... <laughs> Bougie's good, man. Bougie means like you know, it's like your works. I I would drop minimum five hundred on anything you make, and you better be selling everything at minimum five hundred. Oh my god! Okay, okay. Um, like, but yeah. Um, well, for I use that word to mean like high high quality. Just so you know, like I'm putting you up there with like Chanel and like Louis Vuitton and stuff. Like that's what I mean. Because oh, like no, that's, okay. Okay. <laughs> that's uh, what I mean. <laughs> I'm, like, I, I'm like I am not bougie. I'm like the farthest thing from bougie. Trust me. But no, um, I'm not lost train of thought because we were talking about <laughs> I threw you off. Um, with no, no, no. But uh -huh. like bougie for me is like a good thing. It means like uh, how do I say it? Not commercial because there is um, there is a line between commercial and yeah. Because literally Kate Spade was selling crochet tops for $600, mm -hmm. like crop tops. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, you, I mean, we had like, you know, you didn't, you've been published in Vogue Knitting. So it's not like it's every day today, <laughs> you know, like you yeah. are up there. So that's um, what I mean. You're up here. <laughs> um. Well, I, I will say. Um... So yeah, on your perspective. Going like getting a little bit more specific in that mindset <clears throat> for me, if I was to like create a Christmas gift for just a friend, mm -hmm. I would say you don't need to know how to draw. But for you, who's been on like actual high fashion standards and and you know there is you have to follow a certain protocol when it comes to creating for the human body. So for you, is the, in, in, in that sense, is the question, does someone need to know how to draw, to design? I will say, I will say, because you just, you just hit like the, like the, the head, the nail, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The uh, head, the nail on the head, whatever I'm trying to say. But mm -hmm. uh, they just need to know, like really for me, because like I said, I started um, garment designing, like crocheting like garments um, way before I started sketching and drawing. Um, drawing them but that was because i had a sense of the human body plus i am also a dancer as well so like i had to study human anatomy and all those things and stuff like that and so being aware of the body and the dimensions and also applying like garment construction to that mm -hmm. um because I, I study a lot of like garment construction like like courses and videos like because there's a lot of free stuff out there and youtube land and like all these free courses that are online um but um okay well you know what you know what now. okay my type of i love to play devil's advocate mm -hmm. and i consider you a very close colleague and friend <clears throat> so let's go. let's let's get a little spicy then <clears throat> Going back to your reaction to the word bougie, what would you, like, uh, what is, like, an advice or something in which you can give to other creators in terms of valuing their work? And I'll put, I'll give you a little perspective and context to that question. So me as a Zoom instructor, when we... And even before the pandemic, when it was doing the classes were all virtual, some people were giving their classes for free. And, you mm -hmm. know, most of some of us were charging. So getting on that spicy topic of should I charge? Should I for like a pattern or like what constitutes as like free information to share on YouTube or something like that? So for someone on your caliber, like what is your give us your personal take opinion on that because it could vary you know like if i ask yeah, the same yeah. question to someone who let's say runs a community center like i'm pretty sure they'll mm -hmm. say a different answer than mm -hmm. than a published because okay. i haven't been published so that's why the, so i hope oh. it's okay that i bring these labels out because like i just started into this world and like the crochet yeah. social media world and the same way in the dance world, there's there's titles and there's hierarchies and there's tiers and there's, you know, milestones professional-wise. 
So, Mm -hmm. and I think you're, I think you're highly accoladed in the sense that, you know, your qualifications are valid and they're to a certain standard where it's like, you know, when it comes to putting the fashion world of crochet, there has to be some type of structure. And I think you, you encompass a lot of experiences of growth as a crochet designer. <laughs> and I even use that yeah. lightly. I put air quotes as designer, you know, cause like in the oh. sense, like what makes us a designer? What makes me a designer? What makes you a designer? Like anyone who do we own double crochet, you know? So it's kind of like no. who owns no. all of no. that stuff. So. No. no. So anyways, going back to that, since like <laughs> no one owns, if the stitches are public and free okay. information, what's your advice in terms of valuing your own or someone's unique work? Okay. Well, I, um, first off, um, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of, like, just regular, like, just anything, any piece that you make with your hand takes a lot of time. Okay. Takes um, your talent. Takes, um, like, money to buy the supplies. Um, And so I feel as if, you know, anything that's made by hand, like, you maybe like up your price. Mm-hmm. Um, it kills me when I see people like selling their stuff for twenty dollars. You know, um, but, but let me tell you, I used to be that person. I used to be it, and so, so I had to learn the hard way. So that's why I can say it now. Um, but it kills me because like I remember the time when I was short, like. I was, um, oh my God, sorry. Yeah. Someone just put in the chat. He's the Nordstrom to our Walmart. You're our North. <laughs> You're the Nordstrom to our Walmart. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Blanca Altieres, one of my oh, members just said that. Oh my God. <laughs> well, uh, no, 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 no. Great. What did I say about no, no, before no, no. the show? Learn how to take the compliment, Mr. Nordstrom. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, Honestly, it, I, I, I think that's a good thing. Because I know some people would consider that, like, pretentious. But you're not pretentious at all. So take it, like, I, I think it comes from a good place. <laughs> um, but going back to what I was saying. Yeah, um, go for no, it. <laughs> um, uh, I say... Really, really evaluate that. Um, like your time, like I said, your money, your um, your talent. Um, and like this is something that I've um, my aunt she had to um, help me with this um, because I remember, like I said, I was charging like twenty dollars for this, twenty dollars for that, maybe fifty for like a sweater or something like that back in the days. But my aunt, she was like, so, so Thomas, so if you had, um, you know, like if you had a store or something like that. Mm-hmm. How much would you, um, how much would you like to get paid? How much would you like to pay yourself in order to survive off of what you do? And it, it, it had me, to, like, I had to sit back and think about that. I was like, hmm, you're absolutely right. Right. And, she, and she's the one who brought all that, like, to my attention. Like, you're, you're doing this, you're doing that. But uh, you're not, only, like, like yeah, during that time I was only creating, like, sweaters and stuff like that. Uh, but then I created, the, like, the peacock dress. And... That's when I was like, you know what, baby, she's absolutely right. And so, yeah, I had to like reevaluate like my prices and my price points mm-hmm. because like that, the gown took me about three months to make. Um, right, a lot of a lot of a lot of money, a lot of freaking money, and um, yeah. So I, I like so right now that that dress is set at three thousand dollars, and so. And I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going, I'm not leaving from that price at all. Right, Probably right. Go up, but I'm not leaving, I'm not going down from that. So you really have to know your worth. Know right. your worth. And guess what? You are so worth it. You are worth it. So let, let your worthiness match your hands, the worth of your hands. So that's what I say. That's fair. No, that's very, very fair and very valid in terms of... <clears throat> uh, what do you call it? Uh, it's a fair perspective. And that's very interesting. And I, and I thank you for sharing that with us because um, 
I even experienced it through Zumba because it was very hard for me to draw a line between passion yeah. and what's the word I'm looking for? Not not like not even like reality cuz like you know, you're using your wrists, so you're damaging your your hands as you do it and stuff, so. Let me ask you this. Yeah. How long how like how, like how long and like how much time did you spend on um, do you have to be certified to be a Zumba instructor? Uh, I mean, yeah, you get trained, yeah, for one day, for you eight hours. You get trained. Hours. Yep. Okay. So how long did it take for you to be, like, really confident in what you were doing that you were able to go out and teach classes? How long did that take? That took – it took about three months for me to start teaching, like, on my own. Like, just mm – -hmm. yeah. Like, to even con – like – a full hour by mm -hmm. myself, like just me. Yeah, yeah. It, it took a while. And once and once you started teaching, were you perfect? No, you made no. mistakes, right? No. <laughs> right. And so that was also a part of the learning and growing process. And so you have to take all that into account. You work for what you want, and you got it. And so therefore, you should get paid for it. Like get paid accordingly. So yeah, that's fair. No, I appreciate that, and that's fair. Very, very fair. Uh, a lot of people are saying in the chats, by the way, they're shouting out your peacock dress. They've seen it on social media, so it's making oh its rounds. Thank you. Dude, that's good. Like, <laughs> that's a great reach, you know? <laughs> Thank you. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to remember this whole time I'm trying to go back to, like, the first conversation we had before we went live. <laughs> we should have written it down. Like, we yeah. had, like, good... We went through, like, three different topics or whatnot. What was that? Um... But yeah, dude, we've already spent half an hour. That went fast. Like, this is okay. a good test. Like, I'm like, can we ramble on or like, can we like go back and forth? Is this because like, you know, you have to have some type of presence to be able to do this kind of stuff and keep people entertained. So I think we're doing good. Yeah. Guys, if we're doing good. Make sure you hit that thumbs up. Hit this, Give this video a like. It's the best and the freest way to support this channel. Um, if you are just joining us, welcome. I am your host, Mr. Limon. And here on the screen, oh wait, it's backwards. He should be floating somewhere here on the screen. <laughs> no, the other way, other way, other way. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mr. Stitch, we have the um, coveted Mr. Gregory Stitch. He is oh, a crochet God. designer. Or what kind of title do you, honestly, like when you introduce yourself, <laughs> what, what would you, or introduce yourself to the people. Give us a quick... Uh, what are you currently working on? Or give a quick shout out to what you got going on right now. Well, um, hi guys, good morning. Um, I, well, I'm in Thomas Gregory Hamilton, for those who don't know. Um, I am a crochet fashion designer. Um, I am currently, I have so many projects coming out. I actually have some patterns coming up next month. Um, my first ever patterns, which I'm really excited about. Um, I probably won't write patterns again after that, but... <laughs> Dude, no, um, no joke. A lot of people have been asking me to write pattern. It's so hard. It's so, so hard. And I don't think people realize just how... It's the... I've never had this kind of stress before where it's like... Because people are paying to get... A f like I said, they're trusting that you planned ahead and that when they follow through, it's going to turn out to what you made. <laughs> and that's such a stress that I never realized was an actual thing before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I do. Let me tell you. I, I started my, uh, my pattern back in um, August. Started back in August. Uh, and here I am thinking like, Maybe, Maybe like, like last month, month I'm thinking, like, oh, I'm done. Don't need to do anything. I, I, I um, sent it to my um, my tech editor, mm -hmm. and she sent it back to me. She was like, I'm not understanding the um, – I understand rows one through five, but rows six through the rest of it, it doesn't make sense. And I was like, what? <laughs> and so – and this is the pattern coming up with Lock for Lion Brand, my very first pattern. Oh, whoa, and whoa. Okay, okay. And, um, I mean, we can talk about it. It's, it's, I just can't, can't tell you what it is, though. But, um, no, yeah, watch, but just, yeah, whatever you want to share. I was just like, mm -hmm. I was like, what do you mean? And I was like, well, well, Thomas, you're, you're not really using the, um, the abbreviations that are set by the, um, what was it, 
the um, yarn, like app yarn council, something like that. Oh yeah, 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 um, yeah. For uh-huh. patterns. And I was like, what do you mean? And so I, I had to go go back in. She went back in with me. We did like a uh, like a Zoom thing. And like she was like, here, do this. Da, 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 da. Oh, but um, this doesn't make sense because you said chain this many, but it's actually this many. I was like, what? And so we went back in there and I was just like, what? And like, and so I had to rewrite the pattern. Um, and I worked the pattern up three times, like three times. And I finally finished it. And and I it's it's due in like two weeks to my brand, and I just like sent it to my pattern testers the other day. Oh my god! And so I'm like, like, God. Correction. Geez. He sent this three weeks ago, <laughs> before the. <laughs> Let's clarify. Okay. He means to say he sent like, this three weeks me. ago. <laughs> I'm so sorry if you watch this. I'm so sorry. No, 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 no. But like, I'm, I'm, I'm a little tangent from that and i don't know i forgot where i posted i think it was on facebook um Mm -hmm. or i mentioned in my last live how sometimes i find myself procrastinating because i find the adrenaline rush of hitting that deadline to be super satisfying than the satisfaction of finishing it (laughs) if that means like i live for the timer like that kind of stress gets my creative juices just going and absolutely I feel you on that. Yeah. Like, I feel you on that. Which isn't, I consider that an addiction. I Like, a bad addiction, because, like, too much of it is bad for you, you know? <laughs> it's good to yeah. be on time and, like, a little bit early on some things every now and then. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, that's how I was with the, um, uh, uh, if you remember the big purple dress that I created? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, on Instagram? For the fashion show. I didn't finish, okay, so, I procrastinated, because, um, I, I wanted to, like, last year, I wanted to spend Christ- the cold Christmas season, like, not, like, working on anything. I just wanted to, um, just, like, spend the holidays with my family, knowing that I hadn't even started on that gown yet. And so, January was, like, coming up, like, really quickly, and I hadn't even started on the gown. I didn't, like, I was like, but you know what? I know I can do this. I can I can knock this out. I love that rush. And so I created, I finished that gown the night before the show. And I was like, oh. but it was just like, <laughs> you were like, like so <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh wait, no, you hold it like this. You're like, <laughs> you were like, probably like a violin player. You're like, like, okay. <laughs> like, look, we're going to make this happen. Come on. Look, she probably won't be able to walk in, but we about to, like, we about to make this happen. Like, seriously. Making some pasta. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, exactly what I was doing. Um, exactly. Okay, wait. So someone asked a question, which is kind of related because you're talking about making a dress. They said, what do you feel about crochet ball gowns and cosplays? And then, hold on. Let me see if there's a follow-up. Because there's a huge market for it, and I think I'm going to join in on the fun of high fashion crochet. Come over. Come to the dark side. No. <laughs> bad. No. Bad. I, I am extending my hand to you. <laughs> just take it. Come through the camera. Come over. Because, like, I'm telling you, I absolutely love it. Um, I don't. Well, what's her name? Um, have you heard of Alex Creates? Um, no. She's a cosplay, like, crochet and knitwear designer. And she's bad, bad. Like I mean, totally awesome. What's her name? So I can put it on the screen. Um, Alex creates. Alex creates. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you said cosplayer, mm-hmm. crochet designer. Yeah. Okay. And uh, let's make this color purple. Cool. 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 Um. And then someone asks, is asked another question, since you answer that so quickly. Um, <clears throat> what would, uh, something, oh, hold on, I'm, tra- I'm tracking back on the chat. Something about putting down payments or uh, for projects. Oh, what if the customer cannot afford the price you give them even after you put in the work for said project? Huh, baby, that's... Don't even do the. Don't even do, child. Don't even fix your mind to go buy the yarn, or get the yarn for them without a down payment. 
And that down payment better be at least 50% of what your the, the total price. There you go. Guys. So, no. It's as simple as that. <laughs> no. No. No, I, yes. I, I feel you on that. I mean, it's, it's easy for people to just be like, oh, this looks cute. Let's do this. But then... When I see it, all I see is how much more arthritis, closer to arthritis, do I want to get? <laughs> I, I see, I have like this health bar, mental health bar in my head. And every time I make a project, it slowly goes down that I'm like, of when I'll never be able to crochet again. Um, as morbid as that sounds. But your work is so beautiful. It's so beautiful and it's getting better every time I see it. Like, what is it, that cow that you made with the turquoise and the browns? I was like, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm wearing beautiful. it right now. Sparkle, sparkle. Wait, no, it's not. That's not it. Yeah. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. It was, no, there was another one then. It, it, it was like you had it wrapped over your head. Oh, 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 oh. I know which one you're talking about. That one is with someone else, correct. I know which one you're talking about. I absolutely, like, that, I absolutely love that. That I one was made with, I combined it, that's Mandala Ombre with Reup Cotton. So I just, I like to mix fibers or fiber materials like that and yarn, yeah. so it's kind of like uh, yeah, that's acrylic amazing. with cotton like you yeah. wouldn't even think about that unless you're like on project one way and they give you that like challenge <laughs> that's, the thing. that's the thing that's what it really is what are you talking about sir that's what sets you apart <laughs> so that, that's what oh, went that's through my head when I did that okay. but I'm glad you liked it thank you so much thank you you're welcome uh, someone said, what is this fiberlicious limon and stitch-tasticness I see? Oh, stitch-tasticness? Wow. You need a... That is a good, like, yarn brand it's if fine. you ever come out with one. Stitch-tastic. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. You know what? You know, I think I may, because I'm, think, I'm thinking about, like, getting my hand into the dyeing pot very soon, so I may attempt dyeing, so... Hey, who knows? It's fantastic. <laughs> uh, someone said, Kat, do you ever lose your crow joe on an order? What does that mean? Oh, yeah. That oh, means I feel like things. I would get bored making something that I'm not designing as I'm crocheting. Oh, okay. So go ahead. Look, let me tell you something. I'm working on an order right now. But I know the he's client might see this, so be careful. No, I'm he's not going to see this. He, no, he's, he, yeah, he's not going to tell this. But I'm working on a project, I mean, on a, uh, um, an order now. And I am just, like, over it because um, I had the guys. and I, Oh, God. But, no, anyway, I'm not going to go into that. But <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot of color work. And they want it. They want it like ASAP. And I'm like, I'm not. A, I'm not a factory. I'm not a machine. So <laughs> can you hear those snaps? Like, <laughs> so like for me, that's like I am like not like I, I lost my mojo, my crow joke because of that. So right now I'm just like, okay, one single cro double crochet. Here's another double crochet. Oh, look, changing colors. Hold on. Let me take a drink of water. So, like, yeah, that's me right now. But I don't know. I, I Eventually, I will pick up the pace and get it done. So, yeah. Good answer. Good answer. Oh. Uh, let's see. What else do we have here? Someone said, oh, hi, Kim's Crochets in it. We have another member here. Okay. Nate, you, I saw you. Sorry if I didn't give you your shout out. Sorry, I have a couple members in here. Um, okay. One of them said, what do you do, Mr. Gregory, out to get out of designer's block? And what inspires your creativity um, for you to that you incorporate into your designs? Oh, my God. Designer's block. Um, actually, I just... Actually, today, just came out of a designer's block. Oh, really? That's great. That's great do tell. Do time. tell. <laughs> well, because... Why, Mr. Stitch? Don't stress yourself out over that. You're fine. Okay. It's just, 
I for me, I have so many like <clears throat> I, I like collections and uh, like an actual designer, uh, and so I, I have so many ideas in my head, and it's like I don't know which one to do. I don't know which one to go to. Um, and then once I get when I settle on one, it's always like okay, I settled on an idea. What next? And I'm like, I can't think of anything. I can't. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, what helps me is um, I watch a lot of like uh, movies. I love movies. I, I can sit home all day and watch movies. I love them. Um, but I also um, listen to music. I and I listen to absolutely everything. I don't because me being a dancer, you have to be you know very versatile in that aspect. Right. And right. so. Um, I listen to everything, and that's like inspired from music and inspired from like different costumes and things from movies. So, quick, quick, what is the last artist you listen to on Spotify or music? Oh, Spotify. Okay, no, I can't tell you that because it's embarrassing. It's so embarrassing. Okay, fine. Uh, pick the last one that you want to share. <laughs> I was just, I was just listening to um, uh, what's her name? Rockin' around the Christmas tree. Have a happy <laughs> holiday. Rockin' around the Christmas tree. Oh, it's, so, it's so nerdy because I'm like, but I'm I'm trying to get in my my Christmas like mold because Christmas for us designers and everybody else starts now. It doesn't start like in November or December. It starts now. So I've been like in here trying to like um, crochet and like. Um, Nick, because I have a Christmas um, collection of patterns that's coming out this year. Oh, what? So, um, Wait, what? Yeah. Yeah. So, based off of the Nutcracker, so I'm trying to get inspired right now. So. Wait, 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 wait. You said, you mean like a fabric design or hand dye? No, 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 no. So, I'm just, well, when I say um, patterns, uh, I'm doing a collection of like patterns, like, um, like scarves, or like old cowls and fingerless gloves. Um, okay, okay, all okay. Of the Nutcracker, yeah. Okay, so, cool. Uh, yeah. Hold on, I'm changing the topic to your stuff. So, um, yeah, we're at 47 minutes, dude. Time goes dude. by. Yeah, I'm so happy. Um, but this is going very well. Someone asked, what is your favorite yarns Fibers to create and work with. Oh, I, I don't. Well, I haven't actually created any yarn yet. Um, I've worked on spinning, but no. Um, no way, favorite. really. <laughs> I'm very scared to um, invest in that because I know I'm going to get addicted to it. <laughs> Dude, I have look. I have this look. This is my spin. <laughs> I have three drop spindles in there. I have so much roving. Like, I, I didn't I, I, realize I you could create your there. own like colorways with roving yarns and like the. I was like, what? <laughs> you can dye the roving. Like, you can dye the roving so that you can spin the yarn. I'm like, seriously? I just Another think, thing I think it's a to? cool. Um, how do you call it? Like a mind bog, like a mind twist that yeah. you buy someone's already dyed roving fiber and then you mm-hmm. reinterpret that to how you create it when you spin it, like what you create when you spin it. And then you reinterpret that when you use it in an actual project. So spinning yeah. has like a cool, like triple filtration system type of thing going on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like, hold on one second. Let me grab this yarn because, like, this is that's what that this reminds me of. Like, I I don't know. Oh, you can't see. It's too bright. Oh, let me see. Uh, probably can't see that. But oh my god, like, that is like an ashy, smoky wonderland. Is that what that is? Yeah, exactly. It's like a. It's like if Alice in Wonderland. If, if Alice got ashy on the way to Wonderland. <laughs> Let me get my Bath and Body Works lotion. It's right there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's but it's it's like it's like fingering that it's worsted and it's like chunky. And there's parts when it's like it's like it's like roving. And so it's it, and this it reminds me of like hand spun. And I and I bet you this was hand spun. Um, so I love it. I absolutely love it. 
So I'm, I really am into it. But well, I now that I have you in front of me, lines. let me give you the blessing. Good luck to you, sir, in this new addiction of spinning because you're obviously not going to – you're not gonna this isn't gonna end pretty <laughs> if you're addicted to yarn you're about to <laughs> <laughs> but no my favorite fibers i don't have one i don't have a favorite fiber i like to i like i i don't i just like to play around with different fibers i'm trying to think you know what no i i gotta give it hand dyed yarn superwash merino that superwash merino nylon blend I ever since I spend good money on that, it's it hasn't let me down. But, but you know what? For me, I'm going to be honest with you. Hmm. The one that's most affordable for me, yeah, because you know I make these big things, and so it's like that's true. Like this is true. Yep. Thirty to forty dollars a stain on something like that. Uh, and actually, I buy most of my stuff from Walmart and Michaels. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, Walmart is getting really, really good with their yarn game. So no, you know that are, doesn't that that really doesn't are. mean that's not as bad as it sounds. <laughs> it's not like I'll, I look. I have like a whole thing of like I have like cashmere. I have like alpaca and stuff over here, but I don't use it. I don't use any of it because it's like for me. What am I gonna do with it? Right, just right. one skin. So. Yeah. Um. What else? Um. Well, if it comes to affordable yarns, I think the type of acrylic that feels like polyester is my favorite. So, like the Karen Latte cakes, or uh, feels like butter from Line Brand. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, the one, the one that I'm addicted to, the acrylic that I'm addicted to is um. What is it? Karen Simply Soft. I'm addicted to that one because it has that it has that nice silky feel, but it also has that shiny look to it. And like when you work it out the right way, like it, it looks like a million dollars. It really does. And so, yeah. Would and you, I actually, do I think you think, do you think it looks more? Um, what's the fabric term I'm trying to look for? Does it look more satiny though? If you create yes. a gown. Yeah, and okay. exact, that's exactly what I'm actually about to do with that. Cool, 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 cool. No, I so. never thought about that. He's, um, uh, you could actually make some really nice, like, cocktail dresses with that type of aesthetic. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So people are saying, I love ho hobby yarn. Uh, oh, like the twirls and the twisters. Those, oh my God, I wait for until those are, like, I'm, super safe. I don't know what that is. The... Um, it's those yarn cakes that have like really cool gradients, like really smooth, oh. smooth gradients, like where you can't see the I transition of colors. I want to try those. Yeah, I've not tried one of those yet. I, I'm saving my that for video ideas of like me shopping for that type of yarn. So it's really hard to not pull the trigger too, because it's like, <laughs> oh, someone says don't wash simply soft. It pills very bad. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. You can't really like. Washer, but um, yeah, but I'm trying to. I'm also like experimenting. Well, not well, trying. I'm going to start experimenting with like different techniques of like preserving like the yarn or like doing like because what I want to do, I want to like create a piece, right? Mm -hmm. And kind of like, take some paint and like paint over it and like see how that looks to keep it like Wait. I, don't, I know it's going to be really weird and out there but i want to try it can you oh my god that's such a great i like now you're getting my mind running with different ways of like wait can you use fabric paint on yarn can you use what fabric paint on yarn i don't know is that what you're like what you're talking about like getting fabric paint and like painting over oh no baby i'm talking about getting some actual paint and just like Oh wow! Oh oh okay! <laughs> oh like um Jackson Pollock style? Da, 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 da. Maybe yeah, maybe I don't know. Yeah. Hey, you might be good at it, man. You never know. I don't know. I don't know. This is all an experiment. <laughs> I have no idea. No idea. I don't know how that's gonna wash up or anything, but I'll give it a try. I don't know. Well, document it for your... You oh, someone did ask if you had a YouTube channel, so... 
that's a good way to uh, get started on that. <laughs> uh, okay, because like we had this conversation off camera. Like I created on my Instagram, my Instagram, my um, what is it, YouTube channel a couple of years ago, and um. <laughs> It's crazy because I was like telling everyone on Instagram, like, "Hey, I have a YouTube channel now. Come follow me." Not, nah. and that's what they—that's what they did. And I have like a thousand followers, but they've been sitting there for about a year and a half, and so they've just been waiting for me. Mr. And so, Stitch, we're just waiting here. We're just, you know, oh yeah, you're gonna do video content. Oh my God, yes, yes, it's amazing. But I and I don't know what to do video content on because I don't do a lot of like crochet like video tutorial like patterns i don't do that like making this or making that i used to but then my um business my business team was like no you're actually gonna lose money you should sell patterns actually they didn't even want me to sell patterns they just wanted me to create designs and so i was like okay but then um i told them about the the, the how lucrative uh, patterns can be right uh, and so yeah. i'm doing that uh, but it's a good it's a good side hustle to have because like you never know when anyone's gonna log in and buy it. So it's like something to just have there and like just yeah. Exactly. But I don't know what to I don't know what to find you to. Um and I was like, sure, I don't wanna do what you do because like you you do it so well and like and I'm not I, and I'm not I'm not that dedicated. I'm not that dedicated. I wanna be honest with you. I'm not dedicated. Um so I don't, I don't, I don't know. So maybe you guys have ideas. I don't know. Uh, so like people are saying just do stuff. a podcast with your yarn. Don't do anything complicated. Say it again. Um, they said to, you should just do a podcast of your yarn. Like, don't make it complicated. Of my yarn? Of like, or just like, I, I guess I of your daily, I guess what you're trying to say is like, just vlog, but like podcast style. Do you okay. like talking? <laughs> Maybe that should be the okay. follow-up question. Do you like talking, Mr. Stitch? <laughs> um, it, I guess it, it depends on the conversation. I mean, it's fair. You really, it's an honest question. Any artist, any designer, or anyone who's just in the artsy world has to ask themselves, what, what, what kind of content do you want to are you able to consistently provide? I guess that, that's what we should say. Exactly, exactly. And for me, I will say, nah, not really. Um, but um, I'm, I'm coming up with this idea um, that's gonna incorporate dance and crochet. Um, so- That's cool. I know, right? <laughs> uh, but, that's going to take a while to build up and especially for like a youtube channel to like just to turn like to build that together piece that together mm -hmm. um but in the meantime i have no idea what i want to do um some people are saying just just literally show us what you are making every week once a week is perfect <laughs> dude youtube is weird okay. not weird youtube is interesting i will say i think the better word is interesting youtube is very interesting in what they deem is content worthy for the crochet world <laughs> for the crochet world well i mean yeah because i think it's more cookie cutter and more visible the standards for like a family vlog channel and a fitness channel and a commentating or comment channel opinion channel you know i think with crochet oh, no. And it was a big question and a struggle I had, and I still refuse to, I don't like showing stitches in my videos because I don't think that that type of content is not what we're meant to do. If that, mm. if, if that makes sense. Like there's so many yeah. people who have done already that. And it's yeah. like, if we want to move this community going forward, like we, we have yeah. to start establishing the lines and structures of content of like what we want. Yeah, how do I say this? Like how do, how do we mainstream crochet? Because it hasn't hit, it almost did. And I kind of hinted on it in one of my community posts on YouTube where Blackpink, the K-pop group, 
they had crochet yeah. outfits in one of their most recent videos, music videos. So, you know, it's getting a little bit more mainstream crochet as a form of fashion. But yeah. on YouTube, it hasn't translated yet to, like you said, stuff that allows us to fill in the need of content. You know, does that make sense? Like, if anyone was to just create a crochet channel, there's not really challenges we can record or do or stuff like that. Oh, what are you thinking? <laughs> you said challenges? Oh, well, maybe. Huh. Now, now, now you have my wheels turning. I'm just like, huh, so there is a need for that. <laughs> so where there's a need, there's a chance for me to, to fill that hole. Right, so let me right. Say. No, okay, I guess, yeah, I'm answering my own. <laughs> 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 that, yeah, I guess so. But I guess that's I guess I um, I guess that's the point I'm trying to get to. It it's it's that shouldn't technically exist. That shouldn't how we it shouldn't that shouldn't how it be. That's not how it should be. <laughs> like there should already be other channels doing this and we should be like yeah. catching up to them. The fact that we yeah. can't even reference someone doing stuff like that, it's like that's the problem. You know, That's what I, I'm trying to point out. <laughs> but I feel that, like, and it's probably what you're saying, but I feel that as if the more of us who are on that same wavelength, once, like, I feel as if, if there's, like, enough of us on YouTube doing the same, like, like the content like that, like, things that is moving the community forward, right. then the algorithm will pick up. And then, you know, yeah. it'll, you know, broaden the horizons for us. It's, so yeah, it, and it's scary to not be able to it's scary to not know what that looks like you know we literally have to sit down and fun. i i true 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 it's fun because we're, we're actually creating like i believe the children are the future so that's like seriously like we are really like molding like the next like generation of like fiber crafting in a sense so you know i totally i totally feel you on that and i you could call it a superhero complex i think that's what it's called but it's one of the motivators <laughs> as funny as that sounds it's it's one of the motivators as to why i wanted to create this channel because i want to be a part of that movement i want to be a yes. part of that like, it takes a certain kind of person, like I told you before, to be at your level, to be at my level, to be at a host level and stuff like that. So um, if you have just the basics for it, then I think you sh we have to step forward. You know, like, I wasn't, I, I really wasn't going to open up this channel until next year, but I really saw how just yarn and fiber arts is getting more mainstream. And I'm like, no, if I don't do it now, something's going to happen and I'm going to miss out on it. So at least now we're both a part of this movement yeah. that's going on right now. Yes. And it's important that we're asking these questions too, because I don't think anyone has asked these types of questions in terms of like, uh, you know, how do we level up crochet? <laughs> Just that question, you know, when I was telling um, uh, one of my family members showed me a vin vintage <laughs> uh, crochet pattern book. And mm -hmm. it just got me thinking, like, there's no, like, there hasn't been a moment where we're just like, how do we elevate it? Where, where does it go from here? Okay, cool. We've yeah. done this, but... Where else can it go? What does that look like? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the mindset is still afghans and pot holders and uh, toilet seat covers and stuff like that. And and that's what that's the first thing people think of when they um, hear the word crochet. And it's just like, okay, well, you know, well, let us blow your mind. So I <laughs> how the people work and stuff like that. And so it's just, I mean. I, I totally get what you're saying. I definitely get what you're saying. I just wish, you know, you know, there was a way that we can, you know, 
get there without you know taking that. No, know, honestly, that long, I I honestly do home. wish that there were more popular crochet. I straight out just saying it. I wish there were more popular crochet channels out there that I could just follow in their footsteps as opposed to trying to create a new content path for crochet on YouTube. So a part of me oh, does geez. feel like I wish it was just easier that way, but you know. <laughs> okay. 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 So, so why, why wouldn't you want to, like, why, why not? Why not? Why not? Why not adventure out? Right. Like, come on. No, true. Um, I guess, I guess what I'm trying to say is I get jealous that it, it, it's easier for other people to become content creators. And, but the moment, mm -hmm. but like, if you hyper focus on crochet though, we haven't gone up to, you know, like back then family vlogs weren't a thing. They weren't popular and then they blew up. Currently right no. now, like what's blowing up is tiny houses, people who live in tiny houses. Like it's a niche on YouTube. Oh. It's blowing up. They have millions of subscribers, those channels and stuff. So, you know, oh. when I like there's already like a structure in terms of what content and what people like that. Uh, encompasses the overall masses where it's easily consumable but when it comes to crochet I guess that's where I'm uh, I just feel a little jealous where I'm like er, like we're not mainstream yet like I wish it was just eat like you know that's like just, you just said it though you just said it you said yet so that means it's coming that and means we gotta do that means we gotta to do, do it. it so you gotta open up your channel too now <laughs> gotcha you, you fell right into the you. trap <laughs> Okay, but I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will put my thinking cap on, and and you know I think the problem is for me is that a lot of people come to you know a lot of these channels, and that could be the thing because people are expecting to they're not they're they're not really ex like expecting like like the day in the life of a crochet designer or a knitwear designer or whatever or just a knitter or a crocheter uh, they're expecting oh this is how you do this this is how you do that but what like what you're doing is so totally different it's so new you know it's like you're actually like a like a lifestyle like crochet like channel it's like a day in the life of mr limon and it's just like amazing and it, it has you it captivates you and I, like I said, like maybe you are going to be the person to really like change the way people or just regular, you know, um, civilians um, look at the crochet world or the fiber world. Okay. So I say keep doing it. Okay. No, that's fair. That's fair. I hear you loud and clear. And but he's like, I'm I promise to be a little bit more. <laughs> I'll see the I'll see the glass half full. How about that? I promise to see it more half full. Okay. <laughs> Okay. So someone said, put a comment in the chat. So we'll kind of slowly, dude, it's been an hour. This was oh. amazing. Oh, I didn't even know that. Was yeah, fun. dude, we've <laughs> been, I, I'm so happy that we, like the banter has been great going back and forth because it means that crochet is not boring. <laughs> it's not boring. <laughs> like seriously. So for those watching in the future, thank you for joining us. And this is not a boring topic. And welcome to the crazy world of yarn and crochet and fiber arts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, oh, so yeah, people are saying saturated in tutorials, vlog styles are kind of interesting to see on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are saying I should be more... I need to believe in myself more. <laughs> okay, guys, I <laughs> they're either telling you to yell at me. Um, someone did comment that. Uh, what do you real quick? This will be like the final topic, and then we'll I'll let you give your quick shout outs to anything you want to share with the people here. Um, but final closing topics. What do you think on high fashion commercial brands taking other people's knit and crochet? designs to mass produce yo let me tell you something i wish somebody would <laughs> a mr stitch a mr stitch original <laughs> he will come after you <laughs> like i am I like that i am really disgusted by that like like a lot of my friends have like well 
I think right now, Uh before, so we don't get too far off on the tangent, I think the biggest thing Mm -hmm. right now is Hobby Lobby stealing hand dyers' color schemes from their own hand dye. I was going to go there. I was going to go there. Go for it. I was going to go there. Go for it. Like, that... But first, let me say this. Um, You know, it it really... I am, like, like really disgusted by it because, like I said, I have, like, uh, friends from... in this. On social media, whose work has been like snatched up completely, and have been like, and, and, like it, it, it. Sometimes it's them in their own work, the picture of them posted on uh, websites for sale, and say, "Oh, this is for sale," or like the major companies taking someone else's design or yarn that um, that was dyed, like um, what was it Hobby Lobby? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like took their uh, took their yarn and like and sold it. That is like for me. That's really disgusting. And I wish there was a way that we could protect ourselves a little better. Mm-hmm. Um, and because like, I look, trust me, I've been googling it. Save that for the next one. podcast. We will talk about intellectual property for yarn. Let me write that down. I will. Because <laughs> yeah, that is a whole mm-hmm. nother like. And I really want would be interested in getting your perspective on that. Like I said. Who owns double crochet? You know, like, is, is that a thing? Who owns... <laughs> you just want to explode with, with, with... Give us... Okay, give us a little preview of what no, you're thinking. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, like, there's not really... Um, and, I'm, and it's really sad, but there's not really anything that we can do um, until, like, I guess... Because I guess it's, it's not really... I don't know. It's just a design. It's an idea. And so they're not, they're saying that you can't really, um, put anything on it. Mm -hmm. Um, but we'll talk about more about that next time. Yeah. Um, I think that's a, yeah. So if anyone's joining in the chats, let us know, what do you guys think about intellectual property in the fiber arts community? Yes, please. If you know something, let us know. So leave us in the comments down below and then we will reference this the next time we have this podcast, me and with Mr. Stitch, um, so that way we can get comments directly from this video. So let us know, what are your opinions? What are some questions? Do you think it's right that people can own a design? Because some people, I've heard opinions where it's like, you shouldn't be charging for that because <laughs> it's like, how can you, you know, going back to, do you really own the rights to five rows of double crochet and then you do this, this, and that? Like, <laughs> hey, I'm playing devil's advocate for to get comments in the video. So. <laughs> um, oh, do people, I well, I mean, yeah, it's, I think it's a fair question to ask. Do people really own colorways? Is that really a thing? Because scientifically... If we get down to the nitty gritty, color doesn't even exist. It's a reaction of light reflection and, you know, hitting our retinas and stuff. So to what degree do people own that? I mean, I'm curious. Do you know? Do people own, in terms of, like, designers owning as much intellectual property as possible, can you own a color? Or, like, uh... I, I don't know maybe like but like with things with like logos though but like because like, I guess like there's like a certain combination of colors the way it's put together probably because mm-hmm. I know a little yeah. reference like the Mia Zot, Mira, I'm sorry Murakowski flower that smiley flower mm-hmm. I know that's like you can't copy that exactly because like he yeah. he doesn't own the rights to like a, a flower but he owns the rights yeah. to that flower. <laughs> Yeah, that certain design. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I wonder um, I wonder how, yeah, then they, I, I'll do my homework to bring it in for the next conversation in terms of like, yeah, does, can you even apply a copyright to a colorway? I'm sure there is, I'm, but I'm pretty sure people don't do it. That's the thing. I'm, I think it does exist, but just no one does it. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty, because it's probably too much work, you know? And you probably have to pay a lot of money for that. Like, so every time you die something, you have to pay, like, for the rights to that. Like, that's a lot. Right. Well, yeah, because, like, I mean, I know to own a color, you have to get it, like, approved that it's a real color. You have to get the color code. And then, like, that's what you're patenting and stuff like that. But, yeah. <laughs> um, so, cool. Give us a quick 
Let's. Uh, I'll give the microphone to you, Mr. Stitch. Let us know what are you currently working on. Is there anything we should look out for? Um, your yeah. Gregorian Academy. Is there any open spots coming up soon? Or go for it. Open mic for you. Go for it. Plug. Hi guys. So again, I'm Gregory Stitch. Um, right now, I am working on a project, a uh, pattern actually for Lion Brand that's going to be released November fifth. Woot woot. Um. I'm also, Ooh. like I said before, I'm releasing a collection of Christmas patterns um, based off of the Nutcrackers. Not really Christmas patterns, but just cows and stuff like that inspired by the Nutcracker, which I'm really excited about. Um, but I'm also going to be working with, uh, what's her name, Lady Die Yarns, Diane of Lady Die Yarns, uh, for a hairspray um, like kit that we're doing. The movie Hairspray. Uh, oh, that then, is so um, cool. Because you can't stop the beat. Oh, 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 you can't stop the ocean of the motion and the... <laughs> oh, my God, dude. I love that movie. It's so... I've seen yeah, that. Yeah. I've seen the play, and I've seen the movie yeah. in theaters. So, I... I yes. Oh, my God, yes. Anything Hairspray. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but then I'm also working on, um, in the spring, I'm working on an Egyptian fashion collection. Ooh, so okay. That's going to be dropping in the spring. So, yeah. Yes, now you got me thinking, motion up, motion up, away from the <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Oh awesome. So. Well, it looks like you've got a very busy plate in your coming up. So, uh, guys, check him out, Mr. Gregory Stitch. He's on Instagram. What is your Instagram handle? Gregory Stitch. Gregory Stitch. <laughs> so, yeah, guys, keep an eye out for him. He is, he is an amazing friend, designer, um, visionary, and just contributor to this whole fiber arts community. So if you don't know him, now you do, and you should continue to know about him. And yeah, hound on him. Go put it on his profile that he needs to get on his YouTube channel <laughs> so we can collab more often. <laughs> but anyways, I will um, organize with Mr. Stitch when he can come back to this podcast. But thank you so much for being part of the inaugural show. I didn't even tell you that this is the first show. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> I, well, I didn't want to put that is, much pressure sure. on you. I wanted this to feel very relaxed. So, surprise. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me today. Yeah. Thank no, you. I mean, I my mom always told me, taught me to um, give recognition to where you begin and stuff like that. And even before I started YouTube, when I would just like, you know, uh, uh, Instagram stock certain designers and whatnot. You were definitely the one of the first ones that I started following on Instagram. So you know, you definitely motivated me. I stalked many, many you back. <laughs> it took a while because my profile was mostly fitness. It, like I said, I was very shy with sharing my craft. But uh, no, I appreciate I, I appreciate I the reception. That. Thank you, thank you for that. Like I said, like like seeing the growth, like from like you said, you were just fitness, and then slowly moving into more crafting i was just like look at this dude like and look where you are today i am so proud of you i see that again and again and again i really am thank you so much so thank proud. you so so much all right so let's slowly bring this show to a close um thank you so much everybody don't forget to hit that like and don't forget to subscribe to this channel um this yarn podcast will be something regular on this show on this channel and any topics or themes, let us know down below. So in the comments, when this video is done, let us know who owns the rights to crochet designs. We'll talk about intellectual property on the next episode. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, tell them. You tell them, Mr. Stitch. Be like, do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> All right, everyone, have a great night, and I will see you guys in the next show. Bye. Bye.